Hello, everybody. I'll wait. But for the replay viewers, my name's Omar Gonzalez, printmaker, doing a dry point demo for Speedball's uh, Create in Place campaign. I do have you guys right here so I can read your comments. The phone's up there. If you haven't already, if you can do me a favor and follow me at OG Prints. Let me know if the music is too loud or not loud enough. I actually like music when I make work. And I don't think it's I don't think it's possible to make work without it. So let me know. So this process, if you're not familiar, is dry point. It's a form of intaglio process. And it's kind of a good introduction to etching. Um, I introduced this project to my basic printmaking class. Uh, I teach at UTSA San Antonio. So I had them purchase a piece of acrylic and I'll go over the materials before I begin. So what you need is a piece of acrylic. This you get at Home Depot or Lowe's for a uh, Get the one that's $3.98, all right, cheap. You'll also need an etching needle, as you can see here. This one you can get at Dick Blick or an Amazon for about seven to 10 bucks, I believe. Or you can go on Amazon and get four of these for 12 bucks. So I had my students get these just because you know one person can get four and then each student can pay that person three dollars a lot cheaper so there's different types of etching needles there's a spiral one there's just one that's more like a pen there's one that has like a cork in the middle what have you so if you're familiar with uh, relief printmaking um, inking up a plate or a wood block lino cut if you know that inking up a plate is inking the surface, right? Like a stamp. So intaglio is the opposite of relief. So what we're doing is we're having the ink go inside of the lines that we create and we're buffing the surface, buffing the ink off of the surface so that the ink is trapped within the scratch marks, the burr marks that we make. So I'm gonna go over that process and then I'll actually print. So normally people think that you need an etching press to print. I have an etching press. Of course, my uh, students don't. So that's why I'm teaching them how to do it at home. So I'm going to print this one later. But I'll show you how to set up to start making your own dry point. So like I said, you get this acrylic sheet. It has some film on both sides. You can go ahead and remove that film. And for your design, it's really up to you, right? If you like to draw, I personally like to do photo collage for my designs and my compositions. But you make your design, in this case, the size of your plate, which is an eight by 10, which I have here, design. Now the beauty about dry point unlike other processes where you have your design and you have to figure out a way to transfer your design onto your matrix. This one you can have your design behind your acrylic sheet so that as you're making your marks you can see your design and you're making your burr marks. All right? So you have your acrylic, have some tape, and you can go ahead and Put your design behind the plate and kind of tack it on there first. How's everyone doing today? How's everyone holding up during these crazy times we live in? Okay, 
you have your design, you have your etching needle, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over the entire design, basically scratch the entire plate. So the best way to think about the marks is basically all you have are line work. So you have hatching, cross hatching, stippling. You're just limited to your line variation. And I like to think of it as uh, if you were to draw with just a ballpoint pen, and that's all you had to work with. So there's no erasing, you're just making your marks. It's not very fun to see. The printing part is actually the more interesting part. But as you're making your marks, it might be a little difficult to see where you've scratched. So what you'll need is a black sheet of paper construction paper and as you're making your marks you can actually place it between your design and your plate and kind of see where you've made your marks you guys see that you can kind of keep doing that and see if you made any uh, if you missed any spots So once that's complete, then you can go ahead and get your completed plate and start to ink and buff it and print it by hand. All right, so this one's already done. So this is where it gets kind of messy. And you kind of have to be aware that this is a messy process. You don't have like a brayer or like a roller. You're just gonna use these pieces of cardboard that I have. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna put ink on the plate and then I'm going to move it all across and cover up the entire plate, pushing the ink into these burr lines, right? And then I'm going to buff it with newsprint. Then I'm going to take my paper, I'm going to wet it, dampen it, blot it. Then I'm going to use my hand burnishing tool, which I'll, get, I'll uh, talk about later. Everyone following along, taking notes? All right, so because this process is messy, you need gloves. And I particularly like to use gloves at the inking part. And then when I'm done inking, making a mess, then I take them off and I have clean hands again, right? To handle my paper. It's very important that you handle your paper with clean hands. I'm using Speedball's block ink, uh, printing ink fabric. Uh, I think it's nice and stiff for the process I'm doing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some ink to my plate. You definitely wanna be careful not to uh, over ink. Cause it's gonna take a while to get it off if you put too much. change sides if one side gets too ink on it and you're not really pushing the ink anymore and you need a clean side of their cardboard. If you guys haven't already, please follow me. I'm a current grad student at UTSA. This is my last semester, so I will be graduating. Uh, this is my last semester. I'm having my thesis show in a few weeks at Press the House Gallery. So you can definitely follow me along and keep track of what I'm up to.
pushing the ink down into the lines that I made on my design. Then I'm going to remove the ink, leaving the ink only in the design that I scratched, right? And the ink that's on the surface will get buffed off. So now I'm going to use newsprint, or you can use phone book, right? I just want like a thin layer of ink. And the first thing I like to do, you get your newsprint and you lift up the ink by pressing down and twisting. Where you ink up, it's up to you. you definitely want to plan ahead. You know, I have this palette that I made. And it does take a while. So this is the process that you do for intaglio for each print to ink up before printing. Where are you guys from? Go ahead and put where you're at. If you don't mind. So I can shout out where you're from. What's up? LA. Of Chris. Boston. Nashville. That's what's up? That's what's up? UK. Nice. UK, let me think. What time would it be there for you? Mm, 8 o'clock? Cincinnati, New York. It's so messy, I just get the paint all over myself. Yep. Yeah, it's very, like, it's so weird. You have to, like, understand, well, okay, I gotta plan for this mess before making any, you know, crazy decisions. And before you know it, it's everywhere. Yeah, so I did this demo for my class and I gave them some ink to take home with them. I don't know if they're watching right now, but shout out to them. Basic printmaking, UTSA. I miss them, I miss them. This part takes a while, so I just wanted to chit chat while I do this. Usually you can uh, include some easy wipe compound into the ink and it does exactly what it says. It makes it easier to wipe off. I don't have that. What are the plans for the weekend, guys? Stay home, binge watch some TV, 
play a game, do a puzzle. What's the plan, guys? Let me know. Invite me. Baking cookies and cupcakes. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Yeah, it's getting easier to come off. I mean, that's why you definitely want to be aware of how much ink you're putting on, because you don't want to have to like struggle, right? Try and take it off. Like I have an hour, so I'm just gonna do this for an hour. I'm gonna eat a chocolate bunny. Dang. Yeah, it's this uh, Easter weekend. Do this by lifting motion, twist, pull, twist, pull. It's lifting up the ink, right? I find a clean spot. France, nice. Wow, that's so cool, you guys. Hey, thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. If you don't know, my name is Omar Gonzalez. You can follow me at OG Prince. For those of you that's just joining, it is possible to get off too much. I'm trying not, trying not to go too crazy with my wiping. I'm get these dark splotches out. If you're trying to get ink and you're like, man, I can't get these spots off, it's probably because the ink went underneath, then you're just gonna be trying to get it off, get it off, and it's really just because it's underneath and not on the surface. You're just gonna fight it, you know? Just so you're aware. So. Yeah, lighter wipe. Let me go and put this aside here. I'm gonna clean up my area. So to clean up the ink, I use uh, vegetable oil. Are you guys all printmakers? What's your uh... I'm gonna dampen my paper. So the point of dampening the paper is because dry paper is not gonna lift the ink in those burr marks. When you run it through an etching press with the pressure, the paper gets pushed with the blanket down into those grooves. Print them by hand. How big are these? Screen print. Hell yeah. I love screen print. Yeah, so all those, I mean, lino is definitely something you can do, right, at home. Screen print, it's a lot of materials, a lot of process, right? It's kind of hard to like 
teach screen printing uh, online, right? I'm gonna go ahead and print. So, hands are all dirty. Take off my gloves to keep my hands clean. I'm gonna wet my paper. Smooth hand prints, yeah. Yeah, what kind of tools have you used? Wooden spoons? What about this baby right here? Bam, look at this model, right? Top of the line. Yeah, ice cream scooper. Oh, I'm using Stonehenge. So. Yeah, this, this, I use this. I bought these like back in 2015 at Walmart. I actually, I don't know why. I just like these a lot, right? I think it's because it's designed, like this curve is so uh, low as opposed to like a wooden spoon. So I'm able to like grip it and still have this area right here. So I can actually kind of lift my hand and still be able to add a lot of pressure. I don't know. It didn't take too long. I mean, I had this one kind of like a year ago for my uh, my demos back in university, right? All right, so I'm gonna blot my paper. Right, it makes too much sense. It's like, did it like put the ice cream scoop in the wrong like, place in the, in the store? Was it meant to be in the art store all along? Is this discovery like revolutionary? I don't know. <laughs> Ice cream screen there. Okay. Place my paper on. And I make my paper the size of my plate. You know, I'm not gonna try to register a, a margin, right? I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of newsprint because the paper is damp and if I'm putting too much pressure on without, just go to town, man. So I definitely wanted to get this so I could have time to actually do it. Thank you. Appreciate. <laughs> I like that call out. <laughs> it's funny. I like the lookout. You're looking out for me, chat. Appreciate it. I looked over, like, I didn't even notice until I read the comment, and then I looked, I'm like, oh yeah. They're like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, your studio's on fire. What? Oh my god. <sighs> Show must go on, though. Show must go on. Like, I wouldn't have noticed, really. Thank you. So if you don't know, if you're just joining me, my name is Omar Gonzalez. You can follow me at OG Prince if you haven't already. About to graduate this semester with my MFA. There will be no dry points in my show.
the paper is kind of like not really damp anymore, I can just remove the newsprint and just go straight onto the paper. Oh yeah, it's uh, block printing ink, it's fabric. Let me get closer. Picking up. It's like a delay on my on my camera here. Hand printing. See, I've done hand printing. I've done some uh, hand printing on some four by eight wood blocks. I've done a few of those in the past. Oh yeah. How was your, well, it's not happening yet. It's in three weeks. The opening, it's in three weeks. I install in about two and a half at Presa House Gallery in San Antonio. Definitely follow me on Instagram. That way you can keep track of what I'm up to. Some kind of paper, I'm using Stonehenge. The color is a uh, fawn. In order to check, you definitely want to keep your hand right on the, on the paper. So you can peek on one side. If you want to peek on the other side, put your hand down on this other side. Take a peek. So let's take a look at this. So I didn't put any pressure yet, but the lines are very faint. So if you remember what it looks like now, sit down and go to town on this section right here. So I like <laughs> bend the paper a little bit. Paper. Yes, I have. I do have some. I'm sorry. Look at that. I don't know if you noticed the difference. I just added pressure. It was light pressure with the newsprint. More pressure right there. Lines tick, picked up. Again, I'm gonna look. Okay, this needs some pressure right there. Put it down. Go to town. Put it down. Go to town. That's the motto right there. Put it down. Go to town. Remember that. Yo, if you haven't checked my Instagram, look at my class where I taught them lino. Yo, after we did the first group project, group chant. Everyone put the hand in the middle of the etching press, chant. I say, what do you know? They say lino three times, boom. Cheers, laughter, good times. We miss it, I miss it. What do you know? Lino, well this isn't lino, but dry, intaglio. Okay, look at this, okay. Very light, nothing's there yet. Go to town. Put it down, go to town. <laughs> yeah, I have used Arnhem 1618 for my big prints. There's definitely a few on my uh, feed, printing it by hand. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. You're like, I can't wait. Yeah, I, I posted the demo that I did for my class, also with my recent video time lapse I did for them. And luckily, I get to show you guys. For Speedball Create in Place campaign. time do I have? Oh, dang. I'm going super quick. Okay, well, I'll see more peaks then. Yeah, 
I was kind of rushing. I'm just, I'm just nervous on camera, guys. I'm sorry. I just get freaked out, you know? Do like to talk though. So yeah, game changer, right? What do you guys think, huh? Do some flare again. Same, look at that. Same. This thing is aerodynamic. It's, I mean, make like its own like toll-free number. Three easy payments, twenty-five cents. They're really just a dollar. Or four easy payments. I'm sorry. I say three easy payments. Man, my math is so off. Billy Mays here, bringing you the Dry Point 3000 hand burnisher. Yeah, ice cream scoop. You gotta clean it though. Dishwasher safe, so you can wash it. Boom. And then enjoy some nice ice cream and, and, and just look at the results that you do. Okay, well I guess I'll just reveal it. So it gets the job done. Yeah, it's definitely more pressure. Like I feel like, you know, it doesn't matter what angle I'm able to get, I think because it's round, like it's not like flat, like a wooden spoon, it's actually able to get like spot pressure, you know? And because I'm able to hold it like this or like this. The only thing that's irritating is this part right here, kind of digs in a little bit, but it's not too bad. Something about this. You go look for it at your Walmart, or it's, I think it's Mainstays brand. Zoom in. Can you zoom in? Yes. So the a delay on my camera, so it's gonna give me a second. Yeah, guys, I appreciate y'all's attention, joining me during this quarantine 2020. And I hope to see you guys soon. Follow me, please. OG Prince, I'm Omar Gonzalez, signing off.